Okay, so first of all, in the video description, I left a bunch of links to previous videos, and that will give you some background on single jigging. It covers gear, knots, everything from the terminal end to the rods and reel selections. So, what we're looking at here is underwater footage taken at my aunt's swimming pool of the jerk shad. And here, I want you to pay attention to how the bait is falling. In this clip, you see how slow it's gliding and it's gliding towards me. I'm, I'm holding the rod at the deep end right there. And here you see the jig is falling much straighter vertically and that is just me giving the jig slack line as opposed to holding the line tight and letting it pendulum or swing towards me on tight or semi slack line and this is a pretty important distinction so once again here is the pendulum swing and this is the type of retrieve that my cousin uses from shore almost exclusively and he's really changed my mind as to all the various ways you can play around with the retrieval of a jig and it's one of the most basic baits it's been around forever but with your raw tip manipulating the line tension you can get different fall rates you can get drastically different reactions from the fish so here we're going to diagram this out um, Mark in this picture is standing to the left he is casting out towards the right and as usual when you're fishing from shore you are dragging your jig from deeper water into shallower water so in this first diagram is what happens when you're letting the jig fall on completely slack line and as you saw in the underwater shot it will fall basically straight down and this is what your jig looks like now fluke will really only hit your jig while it's falling very rarely do they hit it on the way up they're not bluefish um, especially bigger fluke so here you're giving them many opportunities while the jig is falling to strike your bait however each drop is very short in both distance and time and here is what the same retrieve window looks like when you're letting your bait pendulum on tight line um, you're not getting as many repetitions of the jigging action but what you're doing is you're lengthening both time and distance of the drop so you're holding your line tight at the apex of wherever your jig hits however high you jig it up to and you're letting the jig swing back towards you now this type of retrieve you're really using the tension in your line to dictate how fast your jig is falling and also the length in which it glides forward towards you and this is how my cousin jigs from shore maybe 99 percent of the time there are exceptions and he'll get into that in future videos but He's really convinced me throughout the past few seasons that from shore and shallow water, this ought to be your default jigging mode. And there's actually several advantages to that. But first, let's take a look at a much more popular gulp bait. And this is the five inch mullet. And here I'm just letting it free fall. And you see how much slower it falls even on slack line. That's because it has a curly tail and it has more water resistance so it slows everything down um the jerk shad has really shined for mark this season and for me as well for me it was always more of an early season cold water bait but i would have to say at this point it is just a very good alternative to when the larger fluke are not responding to the mullet or the grub and I'm not sure exactly why that is my guess is that there are categorically different actions um, you can get a lot more erratic with the jerk shad because it doesn't have 
any sort of paddle or curly tail and I don't know if you noticed that but let me slow this down the mullet on a tight line pendulum swing has a very nice shimmy on the way down there I I hope you see that it is rocking back and forth and if I were a fluke I would choose the mullet or the grub over the jerk shad but that's that's not the results that we're seeing this season so if you're not getting bit or if you're not catching quality I will switch to the five or six inch jerk shad from the mullet or grub before changing colors or sizes um, it's 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 a completely different look and Frankly, not many people are using it the way we are. 3 8 ounce jig head, quarter ounce jig head, um, 5 and 6 inch jerk shad, phenomenal results this season. So here's a clip of my cousin and I, we're jigging side by side, and we're both popping the jig on slack line. There's no difference there, but I'm dropping my rod tip. He is jigging and then holding his rod high and tight and he's letting the jig swing back towards him on tight line. So up, 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 holding it, and that's what his jig looks like underwater. Okay, and mine, meanwhile, is going up and down because I'm dropping my raw tip, I'm giving my jig slack, and that is how I've always jigged from the kayak or from the party and charter boats. I'm generally fishing deeper water. And if you try to pendulum swing your jig in 30, 40 feet of water, it's going to take forever. You're going to get two or three hops in, and the rest of the time your jig is just gliding. Which could work, I just never really tried it, it just didn't feel that natural to me. So here's a very old clip. I'm jigging in about 35 feet of water. That's a quarter ounce jig head, 5 inch gulp jerk shad. And I am letting it fall on complete slack. Um, your jig is going to fall slower in deeper water, even on slack line. That's just because you have so much more braid in the water, and that actually creates a drag. And once again, I'll leave a link actually on the upper right hand corner now, but also in the description. Just going over a single jigging from the kayak, slightly different. The slack line bit is part of it, but not the whole picture. You have to deal with current. Uh, you're you're fishing deeper waters and there's boat control and really how you even lead a fluke into the net so links will be up right and down in the video description and here's another clip just sort of featuring the range of jiggy motions you can do I'm using a Kitek easy shiner here but it doesn't really matter I am pulling the jig 8 to 10 feet off the bottom just snatching it straight up and I'm letting it fall on semi slack line. So sometimes that's what the fluke wants. You, you just have to play around with it. The point here is that with a single jig, even the same weight jig head, you can do all sorts of things with it. You can swim it along the bottom. Um, you can hop it from a couple inches to 10 feet off the bottom. And Gaining that confidence, um, learning the different ways you can control your jig is really the entirety of fluke fishing, at least for me and for my cousin. So here, watch the raw tip right there. That is one of the main differences between slack line jigging or letting the jig fall on slack line and letting it pendulum. Much easier bite detection when your jig is swinging towards you on tight line. If you're throwing your jig complete slack line, the only way you can see the bite is in the line. You're not going to really feel anything, especially if you're using braid. But if your jig is swinging on tight line, then it just stands to reason that you can either feel it if your rod is sensitive enough, or you can see it in the rod tip right here. And is it much easier? Yes. But what I've learned, um, especially just comparing the way I jig to the way Mark does, harder, more difficult is not always better. Okay, this, this, you can use a heavier jig on a tight line swing 
than slackline fall, mainly because, like I said earlier, you can control the fall rate. Um, even a heavier jig than I will use at any given depth or current, you can still slow the jig down by raising your rod tip a little bit while the jig is falling. Now, having said that, it's important to note that in most situations, almost all situations, the lightest jig you can get away with is going to be your most effective presentation. And someone asked me in a previous video in the comment section, how do you know when your jig is on the bottom? You know, they just started out, they couldn't really feel it. And my answer is start heavy and then work your way lighter. The jig head with some sort of soft plastic trailer is just one of the most versatile baits and I've I've caught all kinds of species on it probably the vast majority of my fish come on some sort of jig head with a soft plastic trailer uh, from swim baits to jerk shads to curly tails it doesn't really matter learning how to manipulate your jig both the actual jigging motion when your jig is moving up through the water column and controlling its fall uh, being in contact with your jig from 132nd ounce very finesse stuff in fresh water to 25 ounce cod jigs when you're out in you know Georgia's bank back in the day when there were still cod it doesn't really matter the point is it does take time especially if you're trying to go as light as possible for any given depth but developing that feel for your jig is very important and it's just one of the basics of fishing you know that takes a lot of time to master now people also ask why don't we use teasers you know the most popular fluke rig consists of some sort of bucktail or sinker on the bottom with a dropper loop 12 inches 15 inches above frankly i've never seen the need for that if you know what you're doing with a single jig head and to be honest i've i've fished many years on party boats and in terms of quality i i feel no need to hang a teaser on my rigs um, in many ways, it's, it's almost sort of a crutch, you know, if, if you have a teaser above your jig, you can go extremely heavy on the jig head. You can go two, three, six ounce bucktails on the bottom and still catch a lot of fish because your teaser is weightless. It's just floating up there. Um, in my opinion, it keeps you from really developing that that jigging skill, that pure feel for a single jig that is applicable in so many areas of fishing. Um, in any case, back to Fluke. Here's my cousin with a nice keeper he caught last year. Watching Mark approach shore fluking has, has been a real pleasure. Um, he's keeping things very simple obviously using just a single jig but him feeling his way around such a specific niche I mean this is really all he does um, this is 99% of his fishing for the past few years and seeing him just kind of hone in on what works and what doesn't work is is very useful to my own knowledge base in any case if you guys have any comments or questions please leave them in the comment section and we'll get to all of them um, more instructional videos on different areas of fishing coming up and hopefully some catch and cooks as well thanks for watching guys